we have some sick kids at our house. Mm-hmm. And as people that live kind of in the middle of nowhere and try to be self-sufficient, we don't go to the doctor a lot at all. Um, but we do have some natural remedies that we use um, in our own homes. That's not to say that Western medicine doesn't have its place, because it certainly does, and there's things that you can only do with Western medicine. Um, But if you're like us and you don't like to go to the doctor for every little thing, we have some remedies that have worked well for us, and if you try any, let us know. So, um, it's cold and flu season right now, so some of the things we do to try and keep our kids healthy. If they do have a cough, we use... Zarbies. The reason we use Zarbies is because it's made with honey. Um, it seems to help them a little bit. There's a daytime and a nighttime. The other thing we use is elderberry syrup. It's known as, I guess, just a good uh, immune formula. This one has raw honey in it, apple cider vinegar, propolis, and elderberry extract. Also use um, echinacea. For what? Just general wellness. Um, there's also echinacea that has golden seal in it. That's a really good one as well, especially if you're already sick. Um, something else that we really like doing is diffusing oils. And we're not promoting any specific one. Um, right now we happen to have some Butterfly Express brand, but we've also bought, it's called Nature's Fusions from the health food store. And just some different brands of oils. Um, and wh- brands brands will vary depending on where you're at in this distribution because we really liked this one um, from Nature's Fusion. Um, it's based out of Utah, so it's a little bit more difficult to get out where we're at now without ordering it online. Um, um, but we did look at the ingredients of it and kind of went for similar ingredients when we ordered oils last. So this has cinnamon bark, clove, eucalyptus, lemon, lemon myrtle, orange sweet and rosemary um and this other one is mostly the same with added oregano uh wild oregano and thyme so those are just really helpful for um diffusing and just kind of getting rid of sickness the cinnamon eucalyptus oregano those are all really good for um infection things like that to help just kind of clean up the air um and just help in general really um, what else? So I guess back to kind of our, our cold and flu season. Um, the two types of soft drinks that, that are kind of odd for us and we tell people, and they kind of give us a strange look, but mug root beer actually has a foaming agent that's based, is it's a plant-based foaming agent, and it's actually been known to help with respiratory, to help um, with any type of shortness of breath, that kind of thing. That foaming agent is the plant itself helps open up your airway a little bit more. So, mug root beer is the only one we found that actually has that agent, and it is it's quillea extract. So, um, and you, you can use any kind of root beer as long as that's what's in it is quillea extract. I would not recommend buying it just as itself because it's easy to overdose. And if it's in root beer, you're not likely to ingest enough of it to cause issues. Plus, it's an easy way to get the kids to take their medicine. Um, And it helps with coughs, um, respiratory, just respiratory things. Coughing in general um, is what we use that for. The other is Dr. Pepper, which is the surprising one. Dr. Pepper um, kind of dates back clear down to 1885. It was a pharmacist that started putting his own um, fountain drinks um, so he would make his own um, according to the name in there there's 23 different ingredients in Dr. Pepper nobody really knows what it is because it is proprietary but we found that that helps with sore throats that kind of thing um, so anytime we have sore throats we go ahead and drink some Dr. Pepper which is kind of a weird thing but it works it gets rid of the sore throat we feel better um especially if you have like a persistent sore throat and it just hurts and whatever drink some dr pepper it'll get rid of it and you'll be able to move on with your day and whatever um of course i mean don't 
be be aware if you have sugar issues and things like that don't drink tons of it i mean certainly you can use diet if you're comfortable with that but um the other thing we do for our kids because um airborne is one or generic airborne yeah <laughs> we're not promoting brands yeah. here <laughs> um emergency is another um everybody knows that these are touted and toted as you know good cold remedies and that kind of thing so what we actually do is we actually take and mix both of these at the same time they do have a little bit of a of a carbonation effect because of some of the ingredients that are in it but then we actually add um, a, a multivitamin drink mix to it um, that allows us to kind of I guess cover up the gross taste for our kids so we'll mix that up when they all start feeling kind of crummy um, that way they'll get all the vitamins they, vitamins they need vitamin C um, is, is a big one and vitamin D and a few other things that uh, help them kind of pull out of that sickness a little bit quicker so we call it vitamin C juice we mix up a whole pitcher of it and then just drink it and it really helps cut the time of sickness in our house um, especially when it seems like everybody's getting it we'll make that or even just as a preventative to kind of if one is kind of getting sick to prevent the rest of them from getting sick of course when you have a big family everybody's gonna get sick at some point <laughs> Um, another thing we use um, is oregano oil. Now, this burns, so if you take it by itself, you're not going to feel it's, it burns. <laughs> um, so what we like to do for the kids is rub it on their feet, especially the ball of their foot, um, and then just have them put on some socks. It helps pull toxins out. Your foot is kind of the map for your whole body. Um, if you've ever done any kind of foot zoning or understand any of that, then that will make a lot of sense to you. But your feet are also where a lot of toxins get pulled out. So um, if you put oregano oil on the ball of your foot, then it helps kind of pull out the sickness and whatever. Um, we actually, after we moved here, had one of our kids had kind of a viral rash going on. And where we don't have a pediatrician right now or a family doctor... Um, we weren't really sure what to do and so I thought well we'll just we put some oregano oil on and she was better in two days so it does work and we do use it for that um, something else that we like to, we like to do let's see um, so ear infections are another thing that's common when you get colds going on, those eustachian tubes can get clogged up, gunked up, ear infections happen. So we actually had a pediatrician at one point tell us, you know, to not use antibiotics, but to use garlic oil in the ears. So we have garlic oil um, that we just put a couple drops in, in whatever ear is hurting, um, and that clears it up. The, another good one is ear oil, which is garlic. Um, but it also has added, um, I forget what's in it, tea tree oil, melon, and calendula, things like that. Willow bark is another good one for as a natural kind of pain reliever to just ease off. Some ear oils have that in it. Uh, we actually had a kid a couple days ago have an ear infection. We put this in her ears twice and it's gone now it's you know if, if it is extremely bad then do seek medical attention but um the pediatrician like she said if it's just the start the very very beginning of an ear infection where it's it's not really really bad she says most of the time the garlic oil and that kind of thing will will dry up that liquid in there and it will prevent the infection so um so another thing we deal with here a lot is kind of anxiety stress um, things like that. We really enjoy these rescue remedy pastilles or whatever. So these are just little uh, things. They're made out of like flower essence that just kind of help with stress. Um, and you can just suck on one of these and it just kind of helps you cope with things. Um, I take these. Uh, we use them for Rosie. 
um, just stressful situations, anxiety situations, if you start feeling anxiety, you can take that. Um, and along with that, another thing we like to use is frankincense and myrrh, and we'll just put a drop of each behind the ears to just kind of balance, ground, ground out. The last thing that we use off and on, it seems to be like even more so, is we make our own salve. Um, we call it magic sass <laughs> just because it so really is magic. Most of the stuff that's even used in it is, is, is common. Coconut oil, it does have good healing properties in a way with moisture, moisture in skin. Um, um, and it's antibacterial. Yep, anti um, so this is kind of like our carrier thing that's going to be your main ingredient. So then we'll add um, various other things. We use raw honey as well. This is our raw honey from our bees. Yep. And um, so raw local honey is really good for allergies in general. So if you're really struggling with allergies, find yourself some local honey, eat a spoonful of it. Um, but honey, as long as there's nothing contaminating it, will never go bad. Um, it doesn't spoil. It doesn't rot. It'll crystallize on you, but that's just yeah. a natural <laughs> process. This obviously um, is not going anywhere. <laughs> if it does get water in it, though, it will start to ferment and go go bad. But um, honey, raw honey itself, if it is just 100% raw honey, it, it will not ever go bad. Um, one thing that we do also put in that salve is emu oil. That was a new thing for me. Um, I wasn't really even sure what it was other than you see commercials, but... Um, I was in a motorcycle accident and um, a lady at work had said, have you ever tried it to help with the healing of scabs and the road rash and that kind of thing? Um, and we hadn't, we went and picked some up and it, and it helped heal stuff a lot faster. Um, so it does have good properties in it as far as helping heal. We put that in the salve as well with some colloidal silver. Sometimes we'll put tea tree oil in it as well. Um, and we've used it for lots of different things. We've used it for burn salve. Um, we've had a daughter that got second degree burns. We put that on it. And it um, healed in a couple days. And it, it they did told us it was going to scar. So. And so it happened to Evelyn, and she spilled boiling water all down her shoulder, all down her arm. And, you know, the immediate thing you get the cold water, you got to stop it from burning. Um, it looked like her skin had melted. And so we went to the ER. And they basically said, there's not anything that we can do. They gave us um, a different silver ointment. And they said, it's going to scar. It's going to be discolored and really ugly. And we were like, well, we make this other salve ourselves. So we mixed up some salve. We didn't put the honey in that one because we didn't want it to, like, s stick. Sometimes the honey makes it a little bit sticky. You don't want it to be sticky. Um, so we mixed it up with the emu oil. And you want... Emu oil is different than blue emu, so you want to make sure that it's kind of liquid. Um, the colloidal silver is a gel. And then um, the lavender and tea tree, so tea tree is just really good for infection. Lavender is good for soothing. So we actually mixed it up, and we started putting that on her. From every, uh, th about three times a day, in the morning, afternoon, and in the evening. And within three days, it was gone. And you can't even tell that she ever had a burn. There's no discoloration. There's no scarring. Um, and so we make this. We've used it for all kinds of stuff. We have actually gave it to a neighbor that had been doing grout and tile and really, really cut up his hands and cracked them up to the point where they were bleeding. Um, and he could never get him to heal, but we gave him some of that and he put it on it and wore some little gloves on him for the next couple of days and, and his skin healed. So, so yeah, I mean, we use, I mean, this is kind of our regular arsenal of, uh, health things. Um, other good things that we use would be shrub. We've talked about shrub on our channel before. It's really good for gut health. Um, bone broth. I'm pretty sure we've talked about bone broth too. Um, it just has some really good immune properties. Um, I mean, diffusing and, oils. And the disclaimer is, I mean, oils won't heal everything. I mean, there's a lot of people that tout and say oh, everything under the sun that oils will heal and do. They can probably help. Um, but, you know, we do still have modern day medicine for specific reasons. Um, 
where these aren't we, these aren't mere miracle cures. I we mean, use obviously, these if you as, have a serious problem, then take care of that. Yeah, and so these are just things that have helped our family in general. Um, stay healthy, been able to treat little things here and there without having to go to the expense of going to, um, you know, a doctor's office and getting a prescription and doing all that kind of things. So that's kind of where we're at. And I guess... So if you have any other remedies that you swear by in your house, um, we'd love to hear them in the comments. If you try any of these and uh, are happy or, or it doesn't work for you, I guess let us know that too. Um, and thanks for watching. See you next time.